One of the biggest problems with multiplayer mods for any game is that they eventually will die. The difference between them is the lifespan they have. This lifespan is usually determined by the community. It helps out to have servers up for mods, especially when you can't afford one yourself. Or you have no clue on how to get one working. Well today I'm going to teach you how to set up a dedicated server in Windows for any source mod using the Orange Box engine. For this tutorial, it helps to have fast internet, a basic understanding of the command prompt, and knowledge about unpacking zip files, and being able to understand some common computer lingo. To run a dedicated server, we need the server files first. To get those, we need the dedicated server tool. Download it to your desktop, and a link for it will be in the description. Now after you have downloaded that, we need to install it, so double click on the update tool, hit next, and I agree. Then the installer will want to know where we want to put the tool. I just went with a default folder of HL server, and I put it onto the root of my E drive. After you figure out where you want it to be installed, click next, next again, choose your region, blah blah blah. Now, after the installation is done, you'll be asked if you want to view the readme, and I recommend it. It will tell you what we're going to be doing. So, if you don't like my voice, you're stuck with that. We're moving on. Next, you'll want to open a command prompt. This is done by going to your start button, going into programs, then accessories. It should be within that folder. When you start up your command prompt, it's at a different directory than what we need to be. So, since I installed my server tool to the root directory of my E drive, I'll need to change the current directory over to that. So I'll just type in E like this, and that'll change my directory over to the E drive, and now I have to change the directory over to the HL server folder. Now I'll type in CD HL server. This will put me where I want to be. Now we're going to make some good progress. Type in hlds update tool exe dash command update dash game orange box dash dir for directory space period. Don't forget the decimal at the end, otherwise it won't work. This whole code means it'll download the necessary server files for the Orange Box engine, which is the basis of the mods that we want to play. So, that might take a while to download. If you have any chores to do, now's the time. Welcome back. Now you should have two folders within the server directory, one named Orange Box and one named HL2. You can drag the HL2 folder into the Orange Box folder at this point. So, we should be ready to host some servers, right? No, not yet. If you're behind a router, you'll have to forward some ports. But if you don't have a router, you can skip this. You might have to allow some ports through your firewall though. When you're behind a router, your computer gets a local IP, which is separate from your global one, which is the one that people see. So what does port forwarding do? Port forwarding tells people connecting to your IP at a specific port where to go. So say if someone tries to connect to you at port 25588 and your router is programmed to point that incoming connection at 25588 to your computer, those connections will go to you. But if you have a roommate whose computer is on the same router as yours, and the router forwards the ports 55598 to him, he'll get those and none of yours. We need to forward several ports and several types of ports to get the dedicated server to work. Before we do that, we need to learn the local IP address, and we need to set up your router to forward those ports. To find this out, open a command prompt once again and type in ipconfig. If you did it right, you'll get a bunch of words and numbers, and we're looking for two sets. First, we're looking for your IPv4 address. This is your local IP address, the address your router gives you. And secondly, we're looking for the default gateway. That's your IP address of your router, so write both of these down. Now open up an internet browser such as Firefox and go to your default gateway address. Mine is 192.168.1.1. Most routers will then ask you for a username and password when you try to log into them. And most are really simple if you haven't set them up, such as admin for the username and password for the password. If you have a router, you probably know what your password is already. So once you're on the router, you need to look for something about port forwarding and triggering. For me, I have to go under Applications and Gaming, and it's right here. So that part's all up to you. Now we need to forward the ports. Forward the ports like I have here on screen. And each and every one of these ports should be forwarded to your local IP address, otherwise your IPv4 address. Now we're ready to set up a dedicated server. I'll be using Ragnarok Arena version 1.5 as an example on this part. So, after you have your files downloaded and unpacked, you can drag them into your orange box folder within the server folder. 
Normally, to boot up a server, we would have to boot it through a command prompt, but we've done too much of that already, and luckily I know a trick. Open up Notepad and paste this inside of the blank space. The uppercase word mod name should be replaced with the folder name of the mod. The uppercase word starting map should be replaced with any map name for the mod. And max players number should be replaced with the maximum number of players you want to be on the server. So for Ragnarok Arena, it would look like this. Now save it as a batch file. So instead of txt, write .bat at the end of it. If you save it and did it right, there should be some gears on the picture for the icon. Now here's the last test. Run it. Double click on the batch file that you just made. It should open up two command prompts. There should be one with only one line or something, and that can be closed out. But the second one should be left open, and see if the final lines for the command prompt were Connection to Steam Server Successful, VAC Secure Mode is Activated. If you did that, then good job. Your server is working. But if that doesn't show up, you'll have to go back and double check if you did everything correctly. Now, for a bit of customization, most people like to name their server or automate some things. Close out of your server and go into the folder for the mod in your server folder. Within that, you should see the CFG folder. Open that up. You should see several CFG files in there. If there's one named server.cfg, you can edit that one, and if not, we'll need to create one. Use the same method we used when we created a batch file. So open up that server.cfg if you created one or you already have one. If you already had one in there, the line beginning with host name should already be in there. That's the name of your server. It's what people will see in the server browser. You can change that to whatever you want. Just make sure to leave the quotations. Also, the server CFG file can hold any CVAR commands you want automated. I will be adding links to the description with a list of them. So, if I miss anything, let me know and I'll be sure to make another tutorial to cover it. Also, I'll be including the files server.cfg and dedicated server.bat in the description. You'll just have to edit them to your needs. I hope this tutorial helped you out a lot. This has been Dead Rockstar, and don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and visit modinformer.org.